Hey guys, it's Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. Let's talk really quick about ozone generators, specifically the SPA 124. It's the same ozone generator that the plunge uses and how to tell if it's working. This is one of the most common questions that I get in my inbox. In my experience, ozone is the easiest way to maintain clear and sanitary water, but it's kind of a hard thing to understand if you're setting up a system for yourself for the first time. If you're asking the question of, is my ozone working? There are some best practices, troubleshooting, and some other knowledge bombs that I wanna share with you now that I've learned just through building my own cold plunges and again, helping everybody through theirs. First, as you go into or are in the middle of this project, just know that in a DIY setup, there is rarely consistency from one build to the next. And that's even if you follow my step-by-step -step plumbing plan. And with that, it just means that there's not a one-size-fits-all solution in getting your system to function the way it should. And it also means that if something isn't working properly, it's likely a problem with your plumbing system, not the ozone generator itself. But let's run through the checklist of what to look for. So first, we'll start with the ozone generator. The nice thing about this unit is that it comes with a US plug, so you don't need an adapter or a spot controller to get this thing to work. What I recommend is plugging this into a timer to run your ozone from anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, depending on how you use your plunge. More on that in this video. So to test if your ozone generator is working, plug it in, and the first thing to look for is if your light lights up. This thing is incredibly dim. It might need to be dark looking at it at the right angle or have your hand over it to see if it lights up. I don't know why that light is so dim. It just is, but that's the first thing to look for. The second thing is you should hear a very faint hum or a hiss. If those two things are happening, your ozone generator is likely functioning just fine. What you won't see with this generator if you hook it up to the hose and dip it in water are any bubbles coming from the tube. This doesn't have a built-in air pump. It will rely on the Venturi to inject the ozone into your plumbing system. More on that in a second. When you install this ozone generator, you will want to mount it in the mechanical area or a space that's going to be protected from the elements. This thing is not waterproof in itself. It's water resistant, but you want to protect it from the elements as much as you can. And when you mount this, you want to mount it above the water line. And what that means is basically your tub, when it's empty, will fill up to a certain point. You want to mount this in your mechanical area higher than the top of your water when your tank is empty. With your generator mounted, you want to make sure that you use your check valve in tandem with both of the tubes that come with your unit. This little plastic piece is not simply a tube extender. It actually only allows airflow in one direction. So when you install this, make sure that air can flow freely from the ozone generator to your Venturi. You can do a quick test by just blowing through to see that it's the right direction. If you've got it the wrong direction, you won't be able to blow through it. And then the last little bit for installation is if you can, you should loop the tubing at least once over. And all this will do is help protect your generator from water creep if you happen to have a little mishap with your plumbing system. So at this point, if your ozone generator is installed the way I've described, if the light turns on and you hear that very faint hum or hiss, your generator is probably fine. The issue lies in your plumbing system and how you've set up your Venturi. And this is where things get complicated and people have the most issues. There are certain factors that need to be present to create the vacuum through your Venturi. First, you'll need a pretty powerful pump and one that I recommend running 24 seven. After experimenting with over a half a dozen pumps in the past year, I've landed on the Danner models as the best options for a DIY cold plunge out there, specifically the 950 and 1200, which are what I offer on my site. And second, you'll need a plumbing system that prioritizes water pressure and water flow to that Venturi. First, just as a rule of thumb, you want to limit the amount of plumbing that you have overall. So lengthy tubes that don't need to be as long as they are, cut those down. Any unnecessary twists and turns, all of that will have an effect on the vacuum that your Venturi produces. And the reason for that is basically any length of pipe or twist or turn that happens decreases the advertised flow rate on your pump. And again, you're gonna need a certain amount of water flow for that Venturi to create the vacuum. You will also wanna make sure that your filtration and sanitation system is at the end in your series of components. Again, having too much plumbing at the end of your system all affects the rate of water flow and the speed of the water that goes through the Venturi to create that vacuum. Most people that have reached out to me with issues either modified my plumbing plan or have used it with different components than what I recommend. And in those cases, it's either a combination of a low powered pump or 
or a filter housing that allows too much water flow through it. And the solution to that is to add a ball valve at your filter housing. This will allow you to kind of throttle back the water flow through your filter, prioritize it to the Venturi to create that vacuum. So again, in most cases, this is a plumbing setup issue, not an ozone generator issue. With everything functioning how it should, when your system is running, whether your ozone generator is hooked up to your Venturi injector or not, you should see bubbles coming at the inlet or return at your tank. And over time, you'll learn to sense the smell of ozone. If you don't have those bubbles, that means you have a plumbing issue that needs to be addressed. I've gone through a lot of trial and error with this stuff, so hopefully I didn't lose you guys with any of that. So here's the list of things to troubleshoot. One, check to make sure that your ozone generator is working. Plug it in, check for that very faint green light, listen for the hum or the hiss. If those things are there, your ozone generator is probably fine. Second, make sure that you're using your check valve and that it's installed in the right direction. If you've done that and your ozone generator is mounted above the water line, move on to address plumbing and if there's an issue there. The first thing to do there is check your Venturi for suction. Again, you should see bubbles at the return to your tank, or you can take the tubing and drop it in a glass of water to see if it pulls the water through the tube. And with all that in place, it's trial and error to see how long you need to run your ozone generator to effectively sanitize and clean your water. I've seen people go anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours a day. So I hope this has helped guys. I've got free resources below, so make sure to check those out. And if you're brand new to this and that was a little bit overwhelming, you can grab my complete plumbing plan at DIYcoldplunge.com. It's basically Lego instructions on how to set up your plumbing in your DIY cold plunge. It has a shopping list of all the parts and accessories that you need with direct links out if you wanna order them online. You can check it out if you want. And we'll see you at the next video.